This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got my good friend Diane Bennett with me. Thank you for joining us today. And you've brought a guest with you today. We have got Carlene Watson from Perth. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. October is Breast uh, Cancer Awareness Month, and we're both here to talk about that. Both of you have uh, had a, a journey with breast cancer, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But we're here to talk about uh, the importance of getting checked and uh, and the fact that you two ladies are here because you did. Yeah, that's why we're wearing pink today because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and um, there'll be one in eight women who will be diagnosed with breast cancer. And the best tool that we have for detection right now and is still mammography. And um, so there was 400,000 women who have not had their mammogram in Ontario due to COVID. Um, screening had stopped for a little while, but screening is back on now and they're catching up. But um, just, I wanna make sure that people don't forget their regular mammogram. That's how my breast cancer was found. And um, I was lucky that it was very small. And um, so my chances and my prognosis are, are very good. So I just want other women to, to pay attention. Now you went last October for your mammogram. I did. That's yeah. right. And so that's when things got started. That's when things got started. It was a routine mammogram. At first I thought, oh my goodness, did I miss a mammogram? But I hadn't. So that made me feel better. And um, when you're diagnosed with breast cancer, they um, stage it. So there's one to four stages. And um, they test you for estrogen progesterone and HER2 positive and because mine was HER2 positive um, I had to do um, chemo and a drug called Herceptin. Um, this drug wasn't available five years ago so my prognosis wouldn't have been as good as it is now. Wow. So lots of times people say you know when are they going to get can rid of cancer you know what are they doing with all this research and it's not happening it's still happening. We're still, you know, my chances are f much better now because of the research. So that's with, right. Yeah. That's right. You, 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 a year ago versus Carlene, you were 21 years ago. Yes. So I was talking earlier, you know, that the treatments must be so much different in the you 21 can, years. And I had um, a double mastectomy and um, I also had a hysterectomy because my sister, um, my younger sister had passed away in February of 2001 and um, she was two years and two months from the time she was diagnosed until she passed away and then I was diagnosed in November of 2001 and I just felt for myself mine was microcalcifications and it was in ductal carcinoma mm -hmm. in situ and I just felt that I just wanted it gone yes and when I had the um, um, pathology report from the um, both breasts. The, um, the second breast had the potential for breast cancer, so I was really glad that I did what I did. Mm -hmm. And um, then in 2003, my first, um, uh, first cousin was diagnosed. She lived in Gananoque, and um, so then that put three in the mix. So it was for genetic testing was a possibility, which we didn't really have until um, 2008, that was part of a study from Women's College in Toronto, and I was gen the genetic testing came back because it was part of a study. It took about a year to get the results, but it was negative for the BRCA1 and BRCA2, the genes, but that doesn't mean there's not a BRCA3 out there, but at the time, it was um, negative. That, and, and both of you, Diane, you watched your mom go through it, yeah. and you watched your sister go through yes. it, and then you get diagnosed with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I was always, like, I lost my mom. She was diagnosed when she was 50, and she died when she was 52. And um, there was no risk factors in her family. Um, so that's the other thing I want to impress upon women is that just because you don't have a close relative with breast cancer doesn't mean you still can't get it. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, hers was estrogen positive, mine's not. So no two cancers are the same. Um, 
you can talk to 10 different women and you'll have 10 different experiences. Um, whether you're related or not. Whether mm -hmm. you're related or not. Um, but your risk does increase if it's your mother um, or your sister that has mm -hmm. breast cancer. Right. Whereas if it's your grandmother, they call that um, Second, uh, generation. second generation, yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Now, Carlene, and you started a support group up. Yes, I did. Called when the Butterfly Club. Butterfly Fan Club. Mm. The fan club was primarily about having hot flashes, which I had, but I didn't have breast cancer. But I and I like butterflies. So I um, originally um, we lived in the states for ten years. We moved back to Canada in two thousand and five, and I realized there was no support group in Perth, but there was one in Smith Falls. I got all my information from the one in Smith Falls that they um, had taken facilitator workshop through Willow, which is a support group out of Toronto that goes all across Canada and they train facilitators. By the time I got all the information that I needed to start a support group, the support group in Smith Falls had disbanded. And I just thought, well, that's, I'm going to have one and it's been going ongoing since 2007. Excellent. And we meet at the Perth Family Health Center in um, Perth, and Dr. Hollis, the chiropractor, he was so kind to let us use his um, um, reception area to have our meetings. And pre-COVID, we had our meetings once a month um, on the third Thursday of the month. Since COVID, um, I've just been keeping in touch with um, any... Um, person who was interested by phone and our core group we I, I just did a check-in to see how they were doing and um, of course we missed lots of people because of COVID and lots of my program information and my um, business card was put away and eventually now I've got them brought back out again and I checked with the Perth Hospital and I've dropped them off at the um, at the uh, chemo day clinic at the Perth Hospital, and I'm dropping them off today again for the mammogram department at the Perth Hospital. And I also checked yesterday with um, the mammogram department at the Perth Hospital, and um, they are making appointments now for the middle of December into January for their appointments. If you're between the ages of 50 and 74, you do not need a requisition. But if you're um, at high risk, which, or you've had um, a diagnosis of some kind of breast issue, um, between the ages of 30 and 74, um, you need a doctor's requisition right. from your family doctor. To and that's very easy to do, too. It is. Yeah, yeah. It and is. Any, any doctor's going to be on board with, with women getting checked. Yeah. Right. That's and I, right. I checked the, um, the Ontario um, breast screening for our area, and the Perth site. I checked, and I have a phone number for that, and I checked the um, um, the Canada one, and also the Kingston one. So there's breast screening, and they're all about eight to ten weeks out to to get an appointment, and um, they they say sometimes it takes probably about two weeks to get your doctor's requisition, right. like if you have a high risk or if it's in your family. Um, then, um, but it's a very, very good idea to get a mammogram. Absolutely. Just I mean, we're very fortunate that we have one at our Perth site of our yes, hospitals we do. here, too. We are, and that's where yeah. I went to get my mammogram. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just can't emphasize it enough that you need to get the screening done regularly so they catch it early so that your chances of survival are much better. Um, the conference that I attended on the weekend, that was their big message, was to make sure you get your screenings done, do your self-screening so that you can be aware and um, your outcomes are much better whenever they can get it at stage one before it gets to stage three or four. Absolutely. And if you're doing your, your, your self-checks and everything too, if you see anything, if you feel anything, call your doctor yeah. right away. It's Getting it, yes. yeah. Getting diagnosed quickly. Yeah. Be proactive for your own health is is the big message I'd like to. That's right. Impress upon women. I today. mean, last week we were at an event, small town breast cancer uh, fundraiser, and it was just amazing and phenomenal the amount of support. You know, both by there was almost 300 people in the room, 
but but from the community to be able to support that event, they know what mm -hmm. it, how important breast cancer research and, and fundraising is right now. It is the um, breast cancer is the second leading cause of death in women, next to lung cancer. And um, just speaking to, I was at the event last week for the breast cancer fundraiser, and um, it was really nice to be in a room and see the survivors who you know, did the fashion show because then that gives me hope. And I think we all need to be supported and I felt very supported that night, so. Oh, well talk about, uh, you You were in the run for CIBC already yes. too on October 2nd as well yes. too, so good for you. Yes. And I mean, how many kilometers was that? It was five kilometers. Five kilometers you ran for breast cancer research. Yeah, so, I, yep. yeah. and it was the first run I had done in four years. And, uh, I was determined, and I, I walked some of it, but I was, I was very determined. It was such a good cause. Um, I would highly recommend anybody joining and doing the run. You learn a lot. You see other women, yeah, and it's yeah. a good cause. And yeah. like I said, research has come. Every dollar they can raise for research is helpful to everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. Now you were saying uh, you went for four rounds of chemo, but you also had 20 rounds of radiation as well. Exactly. That's right. Yes, because I chose, um, because my breast cancer hadn't spread into the lymph nodes, um, I, I decided to have a lumpectomy and um, with the radiation the outcome is supposed to be good, whereas when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, it was an automatic mastectomy. Mm. And hers was in her lymph nodes because I think she was one of these women who found a lump and was afraid to go get it looked at. And I'm still convinced after all this time that if she would have went sooner, her outcomes would have been better. So from personal experience, I'm saying to women, don't wait. That's right, that's yeah. right. Get out there, book your mammogram. Exactly. And, and I mean, you, you, when you do your self checks and if you do feel something, go call your doctor right yeah. away. And, and push your doctor if you yeah. um, have dense breasts, then ask for more screening. That's right, you know? that's right. That's I would, okay. Sorry. I would just like to say that men get breast cancer also. Yes, exactly. And yes. men need to be very aware that if they get breast cancer or they find a lump, they think, oh, it's a pulled muscle or something. They need to get checked because more men have breast cancer than what is out there. They think probably within the next year, there's probably about 250 men that will be diagnosed with breast cancer. That's right. That's and right. they get the same kind of um, chemo treatments and they can have mammograms. It's not, it's not that um, uncommon. That's right. And back when I was diagnosed, uh, there were four men in our group hmm. that had had breast cancer. So it's not very uncommon. Right. That's right. That's right. It's not just a woman's disease. No, it's for not. Sure. It's for not. Sure. Well, it is uh, October. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, we're out there. Get your mammogram done. That's, That's right. what we want to tell people right now. Yeah. And I would just like to say that if you're over 50, every two years is the common, if you don't have any um, breast issues every two years but if you're at high risk then it's every year yeah. yes and right. with if it's every year then you need your doctor's um requisition absolutely go for your checkups yes. go for your mammograms yes. absolutely yes, exactly. well i thank you both for being here today diane bennett carlene watson both uh cancer breast cancer survivors thank you for sharing your story and helping women and men get out there and thank get you. your mammograms done thank get you. yourself checked thank you.